Hello, my name is Gisela and I am a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Nottingham in the UK and I will be presenting the journal article entitled Demonstrating Interaction, the Case of Assistive Technology. This is work I conducted as part of my PhD, supervised by Joel Fisher and Stuart Reeves. In this research, we unpack technology demonstrations performed by visually impaired people and discuss the key demonstrational features identified arguing for the value and limitations of demonstrations in HCI research. So the first question that you might have is, what do I mean by demonstrations, given that the word can have different meanings? In the most basic sense, they can be understood as the act of showing someone how to do something or how something works. So this is something all of us do on a regular basis. It is a shared cultural or social resource that we use in a range of settings within a range of activities. Others have sought to understand demonstrations in more detail. For instance, Goffman argued that a demonstration is a performance of an activity out of its functional context, to give a non-performer of an activity insights or a close picture of its doing. Moreover, we can understand demonstrations as social interactions, because you will always have two parties, the demonstrator and the audience. Within this broad definition, there are different types of demonstrations. They are a common resource employed in teaching and coaching. They can also be one of engagements where there is no intention of acquiring a skill and engaging in repetition. And there are also the very popular technology demos conducted by tech companies. All of these have been studied at large within the social sciences. For instance, to highlight that commercial public demos do not only involve one person showing a piece of technology, but there is this whole ensemble of people and resources behind the scenes making it happen. However, there is another type of technology demonstration that is perhaps more mundane and less spectacular and as such has received little attention. These are demonstrations performed by users. These are specifically pertinent to those of us conducting empirical HCI research in the form of field studies, ethnographies, contextual interviews, home tours, and broadly, observational studies. Whether we plan it or not, whether we are conscious of it or not, participants are demonstrating their activities and tools to us. And methodologically, we don't know much about what those demonstrations are doing for us as a tool for conducting research. This paper aims to address that gap. And it is in this context where the work I'm going to show you takes place. Demonstrations performed by research participants, specifically those who are visually impaired. So the data I will show you today was collected as part of an ethnographic study investigating everyday technology practices and competencies of visually impaired people. We have a CHI 2020 paper reporting on those findings. Throughout conducting the analysis of that study, we realized that demonstrations were an emerging phenomenon occurring during fieldwork, ending up with a subset of over 100 video recorded demonstrations from 10 different participants observed at their homes and at the workplace. Interestingly, I didn't ask participants to prepare these demos in advance. They were non-scripted and they mostly emerged in our collaborative effort to produce research data. That is, I aim to be less intrusive to participants' lives and they aim to show me activities and tools they consider relevant to the study topic. Again, this is something we commonly do in empirical HCI. The analysis of this paper takes an ethnomethodology and conversation analysis approach to investigate what is happening in this demonstration. That is, we look at actions and interactions in fine-grained detail and we use transcriptions to analyze and reveal them. I will show you one example of this. I am going to play a video clip of a partially sighted participant. He is legally blind but has some residual vision. In this clip, we are at his home, sitting at the dining table, and he is demonstrating different apps he uses for conducting everyday activities. He is going to demonstrate a mobile app for reading printed text. In this example, we will hear the phone screen reader in the background. If you are not familiar with it, this is an accessibility feature that all or most smartphones have nowadays. And when it's turned on, it renders text and image content as speech output. So basically, the phone reads aloud the elements on the screen. If I want to read anything, have you got any print there with you? Mm. Pick on something, yes. Any, any, any print will do, it doesn't matter. As long as it's in... Okay, Google. 
Open KNFB reader. Email. It's not one of the most popular apps, but I like it. Let's unpack this clip. Firstly, we can note there is some preparation or staging required for demonstrating that involves getting the materials and conditions necessary. He asks me, have you got any printer with you? To which I hand him the study consent form. Then he aligns the paper on the table in front of him and after giving the voice command to open the app, he immediately puts his elbows on the table, holding a phone over the paper, steadying and framing the device. Next, as he taps the screen to take a picture of the paper, he encounters an example of natural trouble. That is, the app fails to fulfill the task. He taps on the screen three times and the screen reader communicates, fail to view, those three times. At this stage, he solves this trouble by redoing the whole staging progress process that we previously saw. As he tots and mumbles, let's start again, he leans back, then shuffles and realigns the paper again. He reseats himself and goes back to put the elbows on the table, framing and steadying the phone over the paper once more. This time, when he taps on the screen, he has the option to take the picture, which he does. He lets the app to read the text for about 12 seconds and then he accounts for the success of the demo. He says, there we go. He then takes the elbows of the table and hands me the paper back. So he goes out of the demo. But that's not all. He further checks upon me by asking, is that enough? And as I say yes, he closes up this demo by providing some context of views. He says, that's how I read mail. It's not one of the most popular apps, but I like it. So, as you have seen, our analysis in this paper focuses on the work of demonstrating, or how the demonstration is being done. I won't go into much detail right now, but in the article we also revisit our previous work outlining the competencies of visually impaired people, as observed in these video recordings. So, if you're interested, I invite you to look at our CHI 2020 paper, as well as this article. Key contributions of this paper include the outlining of demonstration features such as using the technologies, which are clearly delineated by getting in and out of the demo. We also observed that several demonstrations required some form of staging or preparation and simulations. Moreover, we highlight the demonstrator-observer interaction, observable in how participants show and highlighted stuff to me, and also made sure to check I was understanding or following their demonstration. Throughout, they provided accounts to explain, contextualize, draw attention, validate or open and close the demonstration itself. In light of these features, in the paper we discuss the ethical and practical considerations of capturing demonstrations in empirical HCI research. For instance, are we accounting for all of these meta-activities occurring around and within the demo? Are participants aware that these are also part of the study data? Overall. One of the main takeaways of this work is that demonstrations are more than only exhibiting technology functionality, but creating shared understanding between demonstrator and audience. The insights obtained through this investigation were later used in a follow-up study in which we employed some of these demos for prompting reflection and supporting awareness in workshops with people with and without visual impairments. We have a Nordicai paper describing that study. Thank you for your attention. Feel free to reach out for any comments or questions.